Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has a lot of issues. Hey everybody, it's Marshall Monkey here, and this is gonna be my Guardians of the Galaxy 2 movie review. And I can tell you right now, I was disappointed with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Um, there are some good things about this movie, but a lot of this movie needs a lot of overhaul. Because I feel like it wasn't as good as the original, plus it wasn't a great Marvel movie. And I feel like the issue here is James Gunn. I think James Gunn should not return for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, because I, f I feel like if he does, it's going to be doomed before it even like comes out in theaters. Uh, that's how I feel about this movie. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I can tell you right now that I was not really that hyped for this movie when I saw the trailers. I knew that something was off about the trailers. I knew something was off about how I felt about this movie. And when I came out of the theater la in last night's showing, I was like, you know what? I have mixed feelings about this movie. And I do know for sure that the first half was just bad. Uh, I, I thought, oh, well, not bad as in just the worst, but bad as in there could have been better things they could have, you know, there could have been a lot, a lot that they could have done to make the first half a lot better. So let's talk about it. Before we get into talking about the first half and the rest of the movie, I have to say that this is going to be a spoiler review, so if you have seen the movie last night, or if you just saw it tonight, and now you're just checking in to see if I posted my review, here it is, and make sure that you watch out for those spoilers. So again, you have been warned, spoilers are coming. Okay, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. This movie is a Marvel movie, of course, the sequel for the first Guardians, and I can tell you that this movie has a really good cast. I feel like the supporting characters are fantastic in this film, but then the main characters aren't really as good as they were in the first movie. I don't know what it is. I just don't like the main characters. I think that they're... I don't know. Something about it just is off with the main characters. But let's talk about it. The movie, I, like I said, the first half is just that bad. I don't like the first half. The first half feels a lot forced to me, in my opinion, it feels like they're forcing it. Also, it feels like they're not trying as hard. I feel like James Gunn was all like, well, the first Guardians was so successful that we don't have to try as hard with this movie. Wrong! You do have to try hard, because even though your first movie was a success, that doesn't mean you can sit back and make a movie that's not really as good. It doesn't mean you can, you can slack off just because your first movie was successful. Sorry, James Gunn, it's not how it works. But let's talk about the characters, because I have to explain again why I didn't like the you know the main characters as much as the supporting cast. So Baby Groot. I like Baby Groot in this movie. I think he's cute. I think he's adorable. He's going to sell a lot of merchandise. End of story. Uh, Baby Groot, as we know, opened the movie with his amazing dance moves. I want to take dance lessons from Baby Groot, because <laughs> he's so fantastic. Uh, excuse me. But anyway, I think he's really great. I think he's really cool. Uh, to have, like, a baby Groot. Obviously, in one of the end credit scenes, we're not gonna have baby Groot anymore, so it was fun while it lasted. But I feel like he didn't really contribute much to the movie, except for one, cuteness factor, and two, a little bit of humor. So I didn't like it. Uh, well, that part. But I like the adorableness. Now, Chris Pratt as Star-Lord. There's, no there's nothing really new here. Chris Pratt's basically Chris Pratt here. I liked him more in the first movie. I think in this movie, that you know... They try to use his relationship with his father as really his main focus here in this movie, and I just don't think it works as much. I like it when, you know, he started to believe that his father was the only, you know, thing that he really needed in this movie, but at the same time, I was like, ah, uh, Chris Pratt, you're killing me here because, ah, uh, I just, the first movie, you were much better. Also, I feel like Chris Pratt was cringy in a lot of parts as well. I don't know what it was, but... He was not doing his best work here. I'm kind of disappointed in, in my opinion. I think Chris Pratt didn't do his best work. Um, so I'm, I'm, I don't know how to feel about Chris Pratt after this movie. Let's talk about Ego though. Kurt Russell's performance was actually really great. Again, the supporting cast in this movie is fantastic. Uh, Kurt Russell was great, especially during the second half of the movie where actually things got really better. You know, things got good there. The second half of this movie, Kurt Russell became the villain and he rocked it. I thought Kurt Russell did a really good job with his big reveal about how he killed Star-Lord's mother. I just thought it was fabulous. Now, Drax is a different story. I like Dave Bautista, I really do. I don't like WWE at all. I think I hate, I don't think I hate it. I know I hate WWE. Um, but Dave Bautista, he's a pretty funny guy. Except in this movie, He's, he's too funny. I think he has too much humor. There are some parts where his jokes land, but then there are some parts where I'm like, okay, shut up, Dave Bautista. I, I can't handle you anymore. And I feel like that's because in the first movie, even though he had humor, it was because he was so dry. It was because he was an edgy character. 
and that he was kind of he well, he wasn't smart. He was like unintelligent. I mean, he was he was smart, but he was he wasn't aware of he was making humor, and that's what made him funny. And here he just loses all that edge from the first movie, and I think it's kind of disappointing. Gamora, you know, Zoe Saldana doesn't have a lot to do here. I feel like she's just here because she's the love interest at this point. She had a good start in the first movie. She was basically this space assassin, which is pretty cool. But here, it's like, uh, oh, Zoe Saldana, you're going soft. I, I don't like Gamora as much as I did in the first movie. Again, everyone's, you know, she's much of, she's much more of a dud in this movie than she was in the first one. And that's kind of depressing to say because she was really cool in the first movie. And that's really all, also a bad thing to say because... The Marvel women have been doing really well, you know, right now. I think Scarlett Johansson's doing fine, and Elizabeth Olsen is getting better, but I feel like Zoe Saldana should have kept that up, and she didn't, which is kind of depressing. Rocket had some interesting character development, but I feel like he was really annoying throughout the film, and I think that one of the reasons why I was annoyed is because James Gunn went really freaking Scooby-Doo in this movie. If you don't know, James Gunn directed both Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleashed. I'm pretty sure he wrote them as well. And there's this one scene where, if you guys don't remember, Yondu and Rocket are space jumping throughout their ship to get to Ego. And there's the scene where like there's, they just get all freaky with the, with the jumping. Like They get too jumpy and their skin starts to like go stretch out, you know, they start to go crazy. That's really James Gunn, and it just seemed annoying to me of how much cartoony it got, and I don't think it made sense. Now, as for Mantis, I actually love this character. One, she's freaking hilarious. I love the character, I love her abilities, and I think that she makes a really good addition to the Guardians, and I feel like she's gonna help Groot uh, grow up a little bit uh, in the next movie. Hopefully she'll return. I think she's a really good addition, like I said. And I think that she... I think she's a really good emotional character, character to have for Drax. I don't know, I saw something there, even though Drax didn't agree. I saw something, Spark. Now, Nebula, Nebula had a lot more to do in this movie. I feel like Nebula was really fun to have in this movie because you get to explore the relationship between Gamora and Nebula as sisters. And that's the only part of Gamora I really liked about this movie. The whole love interest thing, I wasn't feeling it. Sorry, Zoe Saldana and Chris Pratt, you just don't have it. The dancing scene was alright with them. But other than the Nebula stuff and the dancing, Gamora was just off. But I feel like Nebula was so much fun in this movie to have, exploring that sister relationship. Oh, Yon Yondu. I love Yondu quite a bit. I also love this photo because a friend of mine actually knows the guy who's at the left. The guy with, like, the weird hairstyle. Uh, a friend of mine actually knows that guy. But anyway, back to Yondu. I loved Yondu. His, Michael's performance as Yondu was so legendary at this point. Like, it was one of my favorite parts in the movie seeing him pass, uh, pass away uh, and having them get, you know, use a Ravenger space funeral. I thought that was great. I loved how Sylvester Stallone came through after all. And I really feel like he was a good father figure for um, uh, Star-Lord. I think he was really great to, to see that also explored. I really like this, you know, the family relationship explored here. Just like Drax says, we're family. Howard the Duck made an appearance in this movie. I thought that was pretty weird, but I love it. I think it's cool with James Gunn you know, he. I loved the uh, Howard the Duck end credit scene, so it was fun that instead of doing another end credit scene like that, they just had him in the movie. I thought that was really cool. And they incorporated it so well, too. So, props to that, because I feel like that was really funny. So I just had to include that in here. But anyway, let's talk about the second half a little bit. So again, the first half felt really forced. It felt out of place, and it was just... It just wasn't working for me. Um, but the second half did get a little cartoony in the middle of going from, you know first to second act. I didn't like it as much. I thought it was really a Saturday morning cartoon, especially all the characters. I mean, you really have all the Saturday morning cartoon characters here, and again, it feels a lot Scooby-Doo-like because James Gunn made the Scooby-Doo movies, so I don't know if I like it. I think it's okay at this point, but the second half was so great. The emotion was great. The third act battle sequence was great with uh, Kurt Russell. I thought that was fantastic. I thought Ego revealing you know, how he killed Star-Lord's mother, putting the brain tumor in her was fantastic. I thought Ego, his explanation was really well, and I think it was just, I think it was great. The only thing I don't like is that this movie is very isolated from the rest of the MCU. They drop some hints about Thanos and, you know, the Infinity Gem here and there, but other than that, this movie is so isolated. I mean, you literally have no connection to the MCU. If, if no one, you know, if all the Marvel logos were taken off this movie and nobody knew about the comics, I don't think they would have known this was a Marvel movie. That's how, like, isolated this film really is. So I didn't like that either. Overall, it, there's still a lot of humor throughout the film, 
and I think there is a lot of funny moments. The action is pretty nice. The visuals are fantastic. This movie is really meant to be seen in 3D. But I feel like this was a miss for Marvel. And I think that Marvel should be getting concerned here because even though DC's not doing really hot with um, setting up their universe and Fox isn't doing well with their X-Men movies. They're doing well with the spin-offs, you know, Logan, Deadpool, etc. But I feel like Marvel is starting to lose their edge too. And if they don't be careful, they could end up getting bad reviews because this movie, even though it was still a B movie, 85% Rotten Tomatoes, it still wasn't as good as the 91% that the first Guardians got. But what do you guys think of the movie? Do you like it? Did you not like it? I will be doing the five end credit scenes exp explanation video for you guys, so don't worry about that. Um, but again, leave your comments down below because I would love to see what you think about the film. And if you want me to go in depth more when I get into the end credit scenes video, just tell me and I will. But don't forget to scream this video out to the world by sharing it down below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys later. And I will be catching up with Arrow next, I believe. Legends is already uploaded. I just got to put it out for you guys. So again, have a good day. And I will see you guys later. Bye.